Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Blue Marble Riders. Here is the third part of the reflash on the Guzzi Grisso 1200 SE. This is the 8-valve model 2016. And before you get reflashing, make sure you've done the previous tune-ups that I've done on video one and two. That is the valves, the plugs. Make sure you put a new air filter in. Make sure you probably should remove the uh, EV canister, but that's up to you. Um, once that's done, um, then of course you've got to have a manometer for this and you've got to have downloaded all the software. I will put the links to downloading the software for the reflash in the notes below. You will also have to buy a map from Beetle. Buying the map is $100 and it's very quick. You do it on PayPal, you go to his website. I'll also have that listed below in the notes. And within 15 minutes, he will have given you the map of your desires. This is a stock Grizo with a stock can. So I've got the stock map. If I put a new can on it, I will have to pay another 100 bucks for a new map, which I will gladly do. Um, what I should do first of all is tell you that uh, before you can do the reflash, there are a few other things you'll need. You will need, of course, your laptop. There's mine uh, sitting on the ground. It has all the software installed on it, including the map, which I downloaded from Beetle. Uh, then the next thing you're going to need is you are going to need a couple of cables. Before you can start this process, you are going to need an OBD2 KKL 16 pin to USB cable with an FDTI, sorry, FTDI chip in it. That's the blue one with the light on it. Okay, and you're also gonna need the Fiat three pin to 16 pin adapter. So you can adapt that OBD2 cable to the bike and that's where it is. I found my input to the bike right at the back here by the fuses. I've connected it, uh, connected my th uh, three pin to 16 pin adapter cable so that it can, the bike can adapt to the OBD2 pin, oh sorry, cable here. You can see there's power to it. Um, how do I get power to it? Well, if you take a look very carefully here, um, this adapter has uh, a red lab label, uh, sorry, red lead. I should say, and I've put that of course to the positive and it has a negative lead and I've clipped that onto the negative. Now you don't want these to come off halfway through saving your original map. And that's the first thing you're going to want to do is save your original map. So in order that this doesn't fall off and unclip these, which are only clipped very loosely, I've actually zap strapped it in uh, uh, to the bike's frame because if went halfway through this process, whether you're saving or whether you're uploading your map, you could potentially corrupt the whole thing. So don't want to do that. I've zap strapped it so this can't slip off. It is very slippery and you're going to have to connect this uh, to your computer in order to save your current map. In case you don't like uh, the one you've downloaded for whatever reason, that doesn't seem to be the case. I couldn't find anyone who said that, but nevertheless, always a good plan. Once you've done that, you're going to want to uh, sync, I'm going to want to sync the throttle bodies. And so you're going to need a manometer for this. And I haven't connected it up yet. Uh, this is a four cylinder manometer, but I'm just going to use the two center cylinders and connect it up to the throttle bodies. And uh, once we've done that, uh, we can then uh, start adjusting the uh, throttle bodies. Um, if I put some light on this here. Yeah, you can see there are a few things down here when you adjust the throttle bodies. Um, first of all, anything with yellow paint on, do not touch. Anything with yellow paint on, do not touch, including especially this thing here. I wonder if I can get my light on it there. Um, Bit, a bit closer for you without it falling over. Uh, yeah, there's a rod here with uh, both ends, both sides. I'm on the left side of the bike. The reason I'm gonna be on the left side of the bike is um, when you are sinking the carb bodies, you wanna make sure that you've got access to the throttle and here it is because you're gonna to have to keep the bike at a certain uh, throttle level. So you wanna be on this side of the bike. And then the only thing with yellow paint you are going to turn is this screw here, which will basically balance the throttle bodies when you're looking at the manometer. And at the same time with your third hand, <laughs> controlling the throttle. Okay, it only takes two hands, but uh, two hands, eyes on the tachometer and then eyes on the manometer, I guess, uh, as well. All right. Yeah, forgot to mention, because this is a process that takes 15 minutes to download your map from the bike, you want to make sure you've got a good solid battery. And uh, if you've got a flaky battery at all, or even if you haven't, like me, I think you should probably hook up a battery tender. And uh, that is recommended. It's not my idea. It comes from many of the guys. So I've got my battery tender hooked up to the bike uh, as another precaution. Call me a nervous Nelly, but uh, I'm not going to let anything uh, by chance happen here. And, and because I'm sort of using this video to help other people, I just want to make sure I'm covering my bases. So yeah, if you've got one, 
uh, put in a battery tender, uh, put it on the battery and make sure that it's just keeping the battery juiced up for this process. Like I said, it's 15 minutes to download this map. All right, next step is, so I hate shooting at computers um, because you often get this funny banding that takes place and probably will ha be happening now. But I've downloaded the software and the piece of software that I want to use, of course, I guess I should use the mouse and look professional for this, is um, the reader software. So I'm gonna open the reader software. I'm connected to the bike. Uh, connect to the highest comm that you can, apparently. Um, and I've only got comm three, so I'm assuming that's it. And then it says read and, and it's gonna ask me to turn on the bike. Um, I haven't turned the bike on yet. You don't turn it on to run. You just turn it one click so it's live, but you don't start the bike. So here we go. It's going to ask me to save a file name. O E M Original Map B M R. So that should hopefully be it. And I'm gonna go save and it should now tell me to turn the bike on. Switch ignition on, then press okay. So let's do that. Do I blow my computer up? Let's see. Just to the on, here we are. Nothing singeing out yet. Side stand warning light, thank God, that's it. Click okay. And apparently it's downloading it now as you can see. And that's what I've called it. And this is going to take 15 minutes, so I won't bother doing anything except show you. You can just start to see the green bar going. And hopefully when we next meet, it would have gone all the way to the end and there won't have been any hitches. Ooh, slightly exciting, isn't it? See you in a minute. Okay, we are nearly at the end. So far it's been good. I have been wiggling the mouse around. You don't want a screensaver to come up or any other software running at the same time according to the instructions. Just in case, this is a good powerful computer. It's not a Mac. There have been some difficulties with Macs. Um, take a look at that, 537. Uh, what was that? Uh, yeah, about 15 minutes, quite a while. So here we are, when this stops, it should ask me to switch off the key. Switch it off for at least 10 seconds before you start doing anything else. So we will do that. Here we go. Here's the deal. Uh, yeah, the light is on. Just the little parking light is on for the whole 15 minutes. So yeah, having a, having a battery tender might be a good plan. This one didn't blink as if it was actually uh, having to add any more power to the battery. There's a good strong battery in here. But uh, if yours is at all dubious, you want to be careful. I'll wait just to make sure. I'm sure it has been 10 seconds. Uh, I guess that means switch it off before you switch it on. I've clicked OK. And we are now saved. OK, there it is. Um, the next thing I would do is I'd copy that. I'd copy that to whatever backup you have. Just in case this thing goes down, I know I can get the copy somewhere. For me, it's going to be uh, probably Google. Whatever. Uh, you probably want to have a copy of that somewhere else just in case you want to revert to the original map. With the manometer set up and uh, the correct metric six threads that should come with your manometer plugged in both sides, you have to nip up these air bleed screws here. Difficult to get to. Right at the end of the Allen key there, there's a five mil uh, air bleed screw on the throttle body. You need to nip both sides up, not too tight, but just turn them until they're closed. You'll open them later on. Uh, one of them uh, to balance it at idle, but right now you want them both closed. Okay, that was really fiddly and I found a combination of a shortened Allen key. Once it gets nipped in, it gets so close to the throttle body, there's so much stuff um, at the front that you have to kind of go from the side and to get into the side, you need a shortened Allen key. So I just basically shortened the, the head of that five mil there. Um, anyway, it's in, if I go down here, you should be able to see, I'll put my finger on it there, There's, there it is. I'm pointing at the gold hex head. And I've got to do the one on the other side. I certainly hope the one on the other side is easier. However, this is probably the one I'm going to have to fiddle with because I can see the manometer from the side. I guess I can always move the manometer. Okay, got my fan on. Uh, temperature, engine temperature isn't on yet because I haven't connected Guzzy Diag, but I'm going to do that to check the engine te temperature. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to run the bike and see if it idles lumpily. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me, but the bike is running. Not running too badly at all. I've also got the Guzzy diagnostic tool here because I can't start adjusting the throttle bodies 
until the temperature is up to about 60 Celsius. So it's coming up right now. Um, so I've got this running as well. I forgot that the other day I polished the pipes and there's a slight burning smell coming from the polish. That had me a little worried. All right, I'll get back to you when she's up at 60. Um, it does look a little out of balance. Once I revved it, it equalized these quite nicely. It'll be interesting to see if she's still balanced at about 4,000 RPM. Let me put my light on. So you can see they're quite nicely balanced now. No funny smells. Must mean I'm eating right. Okay, we're up to 60. Let's see how she looks for balance at 60. At uh, 4,000 RPM. So a little out, of, little out of balance at 4,000 RPM and I might adjust that again with that screw there and see what I can do. Okay, at uh, 4,000 it's pretty even, pretty good. I'm going to do the idle now and uh, try to uh, get that even. We'll see what we can do. So here I'm gonna go to check the TPS setting and what I'm gonna do is go to measurements and then uh, throttle I'm about 4.7, which is about perfect. My TPS is uh, 4.6, 4.7. It does say that it should be 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, and it's bang on the middle, so I'm quite happy with the TPS setting. So I think what I'll do now is start her up again. I've got a fan going, as you can see. I'll try to keep the engine a little cooler while I do this. And I'll start her up again, and we'll see if we can't uh, balance at idle now. I'm gonna be adjusting the air bleeds, which are in under here with a five mil Allen key. If I start her up, whichever side has the highest depression on it, that's the side that I will open a little bit. The others, they're both shut right now, and I'll open whichever side is the highest depression. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be the port or left throttle body, but we'll see. That was pretty well balanced. Hit the kill switch. We're going to be writing to the Grizo now. We're going to be, we've, we've backed up and saved the old OEM original map. Uh, so I've got that and we're now going to erase that map and we're going to write the new one to it. Okay, this is the writer software. I'm going to double click it. I'm going to find the file that uh, I downloaded from Beetle, 100 bucks uh, US, and this is the stock muffler stock bike so it's just a a better map as you can see i've got the stock muffler on this thing okay and it's a better map it's supposed to be smoother a little more power download or i should say torque maybe better throttle delivery it was a bit fluffy around 3500 rpm so hopefully this one will work a little better so i'm going to go find the map here it is that's his map right there so if i go there i click on that i'm going to click load so when I click right, this is first of all uh, uh, going to tell me to turn the bike on. Before I do anything, I should check the checksum. And it says 5490, it matches up here 5490, I'm good to go. So if I click right, it's gonna tell me to turn the bike's ignition on, we'll do that. And this process is quicker apparently than 
downloading the stock map. The stock map was 15 minutes. This process is supposed to be three to five minutes. So we'll see if it works. I click OK. OK, and it's erasing, as it says down there. Not frightened at all. No, I'm not. Oh my God, look at it go backwards. OK, so it's, it's erasing and then uh, it should go into the right. Let's hope it does. There we go. And it's now uploading. Doesn't mean it's actually uh, writing it yet. It's just uploading the file, probably uh, extracting it. I'm wondering um, what this does uh, when I take it out for a ride, which won't be today because it's pouring down and it won't be tomorrow because it's pouring down. And I'm really ticked off about that. But uh, don't worry, with the wonderful art of YouTube, we can compress time and you'll, it'll appear to you that uh, I'm writing this straight after. OK, terrible day today. Anyway, uploading. Here we go. Nearly halfway now. Going to make sure that my computer doesn't uh, shut down. I've got the battery on charge. As you can see, there's very little charge in it. So it's it's uh, plugged in. Uh, again, a good thing to do to make sure that you don't uh, drop this halfway through. It wouldn't, I don't know. I mean, it probably won't do anything. You'll probably overwrite it, but better to be safe than sorry. Uh, and a word about Max. I have noticed that some people do have trouble doing this with Max. There are workarounds and I think it's fairly easy. He, he has maps uh, and software for Macs and Linux, but I think uh, if you can get yourself a PC, you're probably going to make your life a little easier. Uh, but what do I know? I haven't used a Mac in years. My wife uses them. I try not to touch them. Um, don't really know what I'm doing on a Mac. Okay, and as promised, this uh, this is uh, taking far less time than writing the original one. It's nearly there now. So this is just the uploading. I wonder if there's then a write process after that, because this has been, I don't know, a minute and a half so far. This is a very fast computer, but I don't know if that makes much difference. It's the connection. Now it's programming. That's the word down there. Um, so we'll see. Programming was successful. I will click OK. Switch off ignition at least 10 seconds. OK, so uh, I will switch off the ignition. And it does say ECU on there. That was interesting. I will click OK. That's shut down. I will wait 10 seconds and we will see if anything, any warning lights come up on this dash. As you can see, the bike engine is still 120 Fahrenheit, according to this sensor, which is interesting. This one slow, warms up more slowly than the diagnostics does. The diagnostic uh, tells me the bike warms up very, very quickly. I would say that's been 10 seconds. Let's just see what we get first of all on here. Mm, nothing unusual. Time is still the same. Temperature's 13 in my workshop. Odometer hasn't gone down to zero, darn it. But uh, yeah, everything. Something I'm going to have to do now is to reset the TPS or relearn the throttle as, as it's really doing. And something called the auto learning parameters, which I have no idea about what that is. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, so I'm going to open the Guzzy Diag program again, not the right program we were just on. So if I go up to the computer, we're still connected. Here's Guzzy Diag. We used that before when we uh, were checking things out. Um, and what I will do is, uh, once I've done that, turn this on. I will now connect. Click OK. I'll check my preferences have stayed the same. Oh, I think they have. It seems to know my, my throttle is here. Uh, it says it's at 4.7. Uh, which is about, which is really, really good. Um, that's where it should be. So but, then you uh, make sure that at least one of these drop down boxes says throttle. I've done that. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on view and I'm going to click on actors and TPS reset. TPS reset is OK. And once the TPS is reset, I'm going to click on auto uh, reset auto learning parameters and I'm going to click start. They're done as well. File. Disconnect. Don't forget to turn your ignition off. OK, let's do that. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, 
motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out.